This is the Tailwind Max MIG 150-1 Turbo. It's a MIG welder. As it turns on, the cooling fan starts, but you get no voltage at the welding gun. So, welding equipment isn't exactly my area of expertise. So the plan is to open it up and see if we can figure out how it works. So this is apparently where you load the welding wire spool. This wire is then fed to the welding gun. Let's try to identify the components here. Here we have the cooling fan that seems to be working fine. Here we have the power switch and the switch for the different modes. Here we have the control board or regulator card. And with this potentiometer you control the speed with which the welding wire is fed. And here we have the motor that is feeding the welding wire to the torch. This is the mains transformer. It's transforming the 230 input to a more suitable welding voltage. Here at the output of this we have the rectifier that is turning the AC into DC. This is what I believe is called the reactance coil and this is part of creating the spark when you start welding. And the output of this coil is to the clamp. And on the side of this we have the thermostat and here we have the incoming shielding gas. So through this thick wire is where the current is flowing when welding. And here we have the control switch that is engaging the torch. We'll start by checking the rectifier, the transformer and the reactance coil. For the rectifier we will make sure that no diode has short circuited. To check the transformers we will just do a continuity test and we have to do the continuity test on both the primary winding and the secondary winding. It seems to be intact. Let's look at the reactance coil. So all these components seem to be working, so it looks like there's something wrong with the control board. So we'll take a closer look at that. This is the control board. I couldn't find the schematic for this, so we'll start by just measuring on the components and see if we can find what's faulty. So let's start with testing the easy components. I've already tested the glass fuse, so we will continue by looking for shorts in the semiconductors. The semiconductor seems to be fine, so we will check for continuity in the transformer. So here we have the primary winding and here we have the secondary winding. So what we want to find is a low resistance path for the first winding and a low resistance path for the second winding. There seems to be no DC path whatsoever on the primary winding. So it seems that the primary winding of the transformer is burnt out. This probably needs to be replaced. Now unfortunately it's not labeled. I think I can see some print on the PCB. So hopefully if we remove this 
we will find some kind of serial number or something that we can use to find the specifications of this transformer. So we'll start by removing it. So it says T220-12, so I'm guessing that means it converts 220 volts to 12 volts. Now there's no current rating on this, but the size of this is a pretty good indication of what kind of current it's supposed to handle. Before replacing a burnt out transformer, you want to do some quick investigation on why it burned out in the first place. So let's say there's a dead short on the output of the transformer. There's a good chance you will just burn your new transformer as well. Now before replacing your transformer you want to take a quick look at the old one to see if you can figure out what caused it to fail. So if you're lucky it could be that there's a mechanical error rather than a overheating problem so that there's actually just some wire coming loose from one of the terminals here instead of the wire actually being burnt out. So here we have the primary side and here we have the secondary side. And we know that the secondary side seems to be working fine while the primary side is broken. So there's no obvious signs of burns here so we'll take a closer look at these terminals to see if the wire is just detached due to mechanical stress rather than actually burning out. So it does actually seem like this wire has come loose from its terminal. So if we're lucky we could just reattach it and then it might be working again. So now there seems to be continuity on the primary side as well. Let's reattach it to the board and see if it works. So let's reattach the control board. Seems to be working. So let's put it back together.
Now all we need is some shielding gas and it should be ready to use. 